What's up guys, it's Waggish American here with a kind of special project. Today I'm going to be building the Airfix 75mm Assault Gun Sturmgeschutz 3. Butchered that name, I can tell you that right now. This is a really old kit, I don't know how old the boxing is, but I know the kit's old, it's stamped in the 60s. But it, it, it would have worked for the original goal. This was going to be for my Girls in Panzer project, but then I got an airbrush and decided to kill that project. I'm going to be doing it in 35th scale now instead of 72nd slash 76th scale. So what to do with this? Well, either, depending on when I upload this, school is either just about to start or school started about a week or two ago. And I need a USB drive. So that's what I'm going to be turning this tank into a USB drive. I've already started a little bit when I was coming up with the idea for this project. I measured out all this. I put this down. Then the, the flash drive sits in here like this. That'll be glued in and shimmed in so that it can be plugged in without being pushed into the body. That'll sit that'll sit there. Yeah. Um, kit wise, I'm sure you can guess Airfix 60s. That pretty much tells you everything you know about the kit. Lots of flash, lots of huge overscale rivets. Um, it's actually got more detail than I would have expected, which is a surprise. The instructions are very simple. I did lose the decals, but I've got a couple extras from some other 72nd scale German stuff, so that won't be a problem. Instructions are one page with seven steps. Most, the most complex one is all the road wheels, which is organized in a very odd way. I never understand why small scale stuff has you do this. Assemble all the road wheels first. That makes painting very difficult. Once you get those on, it pretty much should just fall in together. As far as uh, the tracks look not great. There's not a lot of detail on them. And they are the rubber band tracks, which I don't really like at this small of a scale. And because of the fact they don't have holes that the teeth can fit into, you have to grind down and cut off the teeth to make the track sit normally. So besides the the hole and then the USB will be stuck in there, the other thing I'm doing is this is the kit's gun barrel. I'm going to replace this, the barrel part, with some brass tube or brass rod. Uh, sanded down to shape to make this slight taper and then with this or maybe just make a new one the the breach the muzzle brake thing I'm going to have this be metal so that I can run it as a keychain and not break that with that let's get started I started off by gluing the piece of styrene in to make sure that uh, the USB sat flush. I then started working on the hull, snipped that off, and once I cleaned it up, I attached the sides to the bottom of the hull. I did this with I did most of the assembly in this project with super glue to ensure strong joints. After the zip drive had been epoxied, or uh, I measured out how far I needed to cut, and then I mixed up some epoxy and used it to secure the zip drive in place within the hull. I added a little bit of dowel to make sure that the zip drive can't be knocked into the hull. Here I'm cutting some the wire that I'm going to run through the superstructure to replace the kit gun barrel. This is me deburring the wire with a Dremel tool. I added a small spreader made out of sprue to make sure that the joint between the upper hull and the lower hull halves were, was as close as possible. Then I installed the small details on the hull including hatches, and other small details such as the driver's uh, vision area, 
I don't know what that's called. I don't know enough about tanks. I'm sorry. Next, I began to put the road wheels on the back. I started by super gluing the pedestals in and later went on and glued the extra road wheels on. These, this assembly was also done with super glue to ensure a strong fit. Though I did abandon the keychain idea for this project, I still wanted to make sure it was as strong as possible so that it would still be a functional USB drive. I first glued in the antenna, but once the, the super glue had set, I went through with my sprue cutters and cut off the plastic antenna for two reasons. One, they were out of scale, and two, they were much too fragile for a functional USB drive. Next, I was ready to close up the, the hull. I started by putting the inner gun mantlet, I want to say, um, the part that holds the barrel on. There was a pretty big gap in the front of that, which I filled with a piece of styrene I glued in and then snipped out to size. I masked off the rear of the, the plug-in area on the USB port to make sure that through painting and glue, nothing would interfere with the connection. I also plugged some spaces in the shortened rear with styrene sheet before attaching the two halves of the hull. The gun, I cut all this off, then hollowed it out so that I could run the wire straight through it all the way to the rear of the superstructure, making a firm connection with all of those fragile parts with very small uh, low, or, uh, connection points. I filled the rear area left by my shortening of the hull with sheet styrene. Next, I had to attach the gun barrel. I started with this heavily shortened inner piece. Uh, it was on the wire to make sure it had the proper alignment. Hey guys, Waggish American here. I just wanted to cut into my build video because this, the assembly sequence of this was pretty short, so I'm not going to have time to explain it over the time lapse like I usually do. So I just wanted to jump in and explain what's going on here. This is the new replacement, much sturdier gun barrel all put in. Uh, I just wanted to explain how I did this. I took the other gun barrel, I don't have it right now, and measured out this piece of wire which it's like 0 0.062 millimeters is almost perfect size. I drilled out this bit right here because on the kit it's like a it's like a half a half circle to make sure you align it correctly. The rest of this is hollow. Now the, all the real modification came at this breech area. For simplicity, I'll just show this. This is what the part looked like originally. What I did, I cut it off here, and I cut off all this back stuff that you couldn't see, and I drilled through it, first with the smallest bit I had for the Dremel, then I widened the hole to the exact same width of the wire with a drill bit that I spun in my hand because I couldn't find my pin vise. Then I glued this wire, I glued the wire that is the barrel right through, so it runs all the way through here. It's cemented inside of this glued inside of the breech and then glued all the way and it's actually glued resting on the back the this wall right here and the other thing I'm about to add this right now you'll see it in a second I cut the this part the muzzle brake off of the, or the barrel brake off of the kit barrel I drilled out the center because it wasn't completely through I drilled out the nozzle of the the tip just to make it look better and then from the back end you can't see it but from but from the back end 
I drilled it out. It's very similar to this with the drill, small drill, the Dremel small bit, and then widened it with the .062 millimeter uh, drill bit. So that's how I modified the gun barrel, and uh, let's get back to the build. I once it was all ready, I glued on the barrel brake. Next up, the final little details on the hull. I glued in the, I guess you call it a machine gun mount, maybe a light machine gun shield. Uh, the kit didn't come with a machine gun, so I pulled one out of a 172nd scale FW200 kit that I'm working on. I attached the small details that go behind the tracks. And with that, I began painting. The first coat was an overall coat of Tamiya XF57 Buff. Once, as the hull was drying, I also went on to spray all the other road wheels and uh, drive wheels and such buff as well. I should mention, before, before I painted any of these, I sprayed them with a coat of Tamiya Surface Primer L, that is the gray one. I'm a huge fan of this primer. It's a bit costly, but the local Hobby Lobby stocks it, so with the 40% off coupons, I get it cheap. So it's definitely worth it for me. If I was building this as a standard scale model, I probably would have drilled out all the holes in the wheel in the road wheels, but since this was mostly built for durability, I did not want to do that. Next up, I post shaded with XF59 Desert Yellow. I'm uh, not, not sure that I really like the effect this ended up giving. I know my painting was a little bit rough because I had to go through and respray some areas with the buff afterwards. Once the paint was dry, I coated the sides and very rear of the tank with Future to make sure that I could apply the couple decals smoothly. I also began detail painting, such as on the machine gun. I painted all metal parts black and then later dry brushed with Tamiya uh, X11 Chrome Silver. The wood parts were painted with just a random brown I had lying around. I don't know what it is. I applied Micro Sol and put the decals on. I stole these decals from the Panzer IV I built as a Girls in Panzer I because I had misplaced the Stug decals. Uh, they were a bit, the numbers were a bit oversized, but overall I think they came out looking nice and it's not like this kit was, histor was being built historically accurately anyway. I coated the decals in another layer of Future to provide protection and a glossy surface for the oil wash that I did. Um, I haven't done much with oil washes, I'm still experimenting and learning. I don't think I let this one sit for long enough, and I may have thinned it a bit too much because it did not leave much of an effect at all on certain things like the walkways uh, that run over the, the tracks. They kind of just wash straight off, so it definitely grimed the tank up and helped a little bit with the overall appearance. I just don't know that I left it on long enough or thinned it. Maybe I thinned it too much, but I'm go I intend to keep messing around with these oil washes as I do like the effects other modelers get with them.
While I let all that dry, I began assembling the road wheels. I sanded down the rear the rear wheels considerably just to make sure that the track sat short enough for the the USB to plug in. I then took some German gray on a very fine brush and dotted it around to make a chipping effect mostly on corners and areas of wear. This is the little, this is the one bit of weathering I think actually paid off on this build and I'm very happy with how it turned out. All road wheels were attached with super glue and they seem to be sitting very firm so I'm happy with with that choice of adhesive. You can see I've cut the teeth off of the front gear to make sure that the front the drive wheels to make sure that the tracks wrap around. The tracks were secured with super glue. I did it a couple wheels at a time. Beginning with beginning with the front and rear drive wheels to make sure that the tracks fit tightly. I tried to hide the join at the bottom of the tank, and overall I think this worked out pretty well. This kit actually has fairly close fitting tracks. Um, they needed to be stretched a little bit. I had to pull them pretty tight, but they ended up meeting up pretty well. And with the super glue set, it's almost impossible to tell from a distance that they are not a uh, single piece. I painted the tracks with a custom mixed gray. I think it's just darkened Vallejo light gray. I can't remember what I mixed it. Once those had dried and I had given them a coat of future, I ran a rusty orange oil wash that I had mixed myself out of red and brown over the visible portions of the tracks. I let this sit for a while and then used a cotton bud to rub most of it off. This actually chipped off some of the underlying acrylic paint, but I do like the effect this gave. It probably wouldn't be very convincing in larger scales, but for this small 70 second scale stuff, I'll definitely be doing something like this again. Once the oil paint on the tracks had dried, I took Tamiya X11 Chrome Silver and using dry brushing and I also tried putting it on a cotton bud and specifically after it kinda got a little nasty looking on the the right side I just specifically painted them at least the visible ones on the on the left side I applied silver to contact areas between the treads and the ground and also teeth here I am working on the base I used air dry modeling clay which was not a good medium I would not advise making bases out of this. It shrinks like you would not believe as it dries. As you'll see here in a minute, it also cracked plenty. I think I may have been able to avoid the cracks if I hadn't had all this stuff drooping over the edges. Um, because when it dried and shrunk, those edges kept it from sh shrinking into itself. And I believe that's the cause of my cracks. I used a little bit of extra uh, detail track to make a firm impression where the tank treads would not cover up and I used the tank track, the one of the rubber tracks, to uh, press a pattern into the sand. I did this portion of the build prior to what you have already seen. This is the fractured base. This is me using uh, two-part five-minute epoxy to glue the normal base onto the wooden base. Once the epoxy had set, I used uh, little bits of 
modeling clay and water to try to smooth over and patch over those cracks, which in the end did work. Um, it looked pretty weird even under primer, but once I got the sand down, it looked fine. I sprayed the whole base with an undercoat of XF59 Desert Yellow. Honestly, at this point, I probably could have just left it and would have looked fine on its own. Maybe even better. This is white glue fairly heavily thinned with water so that I could brush it on, and then I sprinkled fairly large amounts of sand on over the areas. I let this sit for a couple minutes, and then I tipped the base on its side and tapped it on my table to knock off all the loose sand. Once, the sand, once I was fairly convinced that the white glue had dried, I sprayed the sand surface with a coat of dull coat to kind of lock it in, which worked really well without wetting the sand. I then, once it was all set and done, I went and dry brushed with a light gray. I, in hindsight, I probably should have used like Tamiya Buff. It kind of grayed up the area but I dry brushed with a light gray to make it a bit more interesting than just sand. I attached the figure and with that the build was completed. Alright guys, here she is. It is the Airfix 176 scale Stug 3, all finished. You can see here, uh, first right off the bat, it is not secured to the base, it comes right off the base. The base itself, pretty basic, just black, little bit of texture, gra or landscaping just to make it more interesting. Sand, white glued on, then dull coated to keep it all in place and then I dry brushed it with a light gray and mixed with a mix with a buff to make it just more interesting you can see this German soldier is mounted here I painted him up I didn't get to do much blending but I think his uniform came out pretty nice his face was looked way too not human. I added a little bit of red and tried to blend that in and that seemed to work pretty well. Uh, you can see this this figure is from the S the one of the other Airfix uh, armored car gun things. Sorry about the brightness flipping. I'm trying to figure out the best setting here. You can see he's supposed to be holding a shell. I modified it into a machine or a submachine gun, so that's more reasonable for a guy just standing around. So the tank itself, it's all done. It is weathered, a little bit of chipping. I didn't do any sand or anything since it's movable. Uh, one little thing I did not record. The antenna are fishing line glued on and painted black. Alright, I've got my laptop out here, and here she is performing her function. And click. It's in. I can go through the files. So it works. It's properly spaced. Let me just put my computer away very quickly. Get the base back out. Put her, put her back on. So it looks, it looks really nice now with this base. I originally wasn't going to do a base. Anyway, this kit's pretty good. Um, there's a bunch, there's a couple points where it's not a very good kit, but it's a 60s molding. I'm not a fan of the tracks at all. They don't work out great. Overall, though, it's a good kit. Um, if I ever need a Stug in this scale and of this OSF, I'll do it again. Um, but... With that out of the way, I want to talk to you about something more interesting. I have four more bases that are identical. They're the same base by the same guy. My model club was giving them away. They were trying to get rid of some bases of a model member who had passed away. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going. my plan is I'm going to make one of these US 16 gigabyte USB tanks 
uh, one for every major player in World War II, and I'm going to put them on an appropriate base. So this one's kind of an Africa Corps-esque uh, desert base. I'm going to do an American one on something I haven't said what yet, a Russian one in the winter. In the winter scene, maybe a KV-2, because I really like KV-2s. And a uh, Japanese something, probably that airfix one Japanese makes in some sort of jungle or maybe crossing a river setting. Uh, a Great Britain one, again, maybe put it in the desert. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think I mentioned them all. So yeah, that's my plan. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button if you want to see some more and maybe more of this series in the future. Uh, hit that subscribe button, maybe even turn notifications on, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.